Paper Stadiums build day number four. It's a big day here at Paper Stadiums because number one, we are installing the seats, which is always fun to watch. And number two, my wife is watching me do these voiceovers and she's wondering who the heck she married. The other cool thing about this video is that by the time I'm done, you will see what Wrigley Field looked like when it first opened. The only uh, difference is uh, the original Wrigley Field, which I've mentioned in previous videos, was called Wiegman Field, had a roof over the grandstand. This one will not because I'm going to be building an upper deck to make it look like what Wrigley Field looks like in 2019. It's also an exciting day here at Paper Stadiums because I finally had someone comment on one of these videos and ask a question. So let's get to that question. Michael Hazard, I don't think that's his real last name, commented, Great vid, short for video. How did you determine the elevation of the grandstand and overall scale height based on Google Earth image? You see, what I do first is I have to determine how big the stadium can actually be. I'm trying to fit it on a 15 inch by 15 inch piece of cardboard with a little bit of extra room on the sides. I learned the hard way Memorial Stadium that um, it, you have to put a lot of time and consideration into lining it up and making sure if the scaling is right, or else you're going to run out of room. And if you look closely at Memorial Stadium, you'll see that East Stadium is actually built on like an extension of the piece of cardboard because I ran out of room. So when it comes to trying to figure out the exact scale of the paper Wrigley Field, basically what I do is I take an aerial shot of the entire stadium and then I print it off and I see how that fits onto the cardboard. If I think it needs to be bigger, I go onto my computer, I resize the image, and then print that image off and see if it needs to be bigger. And really it's just a matter of trial and error. I'm sure there's probably a better way I can do it where I can actually measure it and do it on the first try. But the way I did it, I probably printed off five or six versions of the stadium before I found the exact scale that I wanted to use. And if you go back and watch the first video or two, you'll see when I trace the field, I'm tracing that based off of that scale that I printed off. And then when I line up the grandstand and I mapped it all out on the piece of cardboard, that's all lined up and mapped off of that piece of paper that I printed off that I'm using for the scale. And then the scale is also saved to my computer so I can print it off again and have the perfectly sized image to match up what the scale of paper Wrigley Field is right here. So really it's not that complicated it's really just finding out how big I need to print the image off of my computer in order for it to fit on this 15 by 15 inch piece of cardboard and then everything I do from here on out is going to match that original image that I printed off the computer that I found was the perfect size and if I, like I said if I needed to I could print it off again because it's safe. Now to the more complicated part of Michael's question as far as how I decide how tall the image is uh, using 3D mapping on Google Images. That involves a lot of math and I'm not a, exactly a math expert but I have a little bit of understanding of geometry and I use a lot of trigonometry as well which I never thought I'd use when I studied it in college to become a PE teacher but well, here I am building models of paper stadium using that tri trigonometry class so I wish I could go back in time and tell 20 run, 21 year old Trey that you will use this someday. So in order to figure out how high the stadium is or how far off the ground the grandstand needs to be, I try and find an exact measurement, um, uh, an honest measurement in feet of how tall the grandstand would be off the ground. Now I will admit my measurements are probably could be off by 5, 10, 15 feet and then when I translate them into the stadium, my scale might not be 100% perfect, but I think I get it pretty close. 
When I built Memorial Stadium, this process was actually really easy because I can measure something on the screen and then compare it to the field. And the field was basically like a ruler that could tell me how big something was in 15 foot increments. Um, a baseball field is not as easy because the only thing that's really constant in a baseball field is the distance between home plate and first base, which is obviously 90 feet. So I had to do a little bit more um, due diligence to try and figure out the measurements of Wrigley Field, really just based off of that, comparing it to how big the infield is, because the infield is the only thing I know the exact measurements on, but I still think I got it done. So the infield, or the base path, basically became its own measuring unit, where if I measured something and I found that it was 1.5 base paths tall, well then I know that that translates to 135 feet tall. Hopefully I'm explaining this all in a way that makes sense to you all, because it definitely makes sense in my head. But I was also the kid in math class that could find the right answer but couldn't explain how I got there. So maybe I'm just basically rambling and all of you are just thinking this doesn't make sense at all. Or maybe you don't care about this at all and you just want to watch the paper stadium being built. That's fine too. In fact, there's probably some of you who muted, who muted this the moment you heard my voice. To which, you know, that's kind of hurtful. And, well, you're not hearing me say this anyways because apparently I'm muted. But let's not get this personal. But back to Michael's question and trying to wrap up what I'm saying here. So once I figure out what I believe is the exact measurement of Wrigley Field, so if I believe that this concourse that I'm building, that I built up here is 30 feet off the ground, then I need to do the math to figure out what 30 feet on real Wrigley transitions to on paper Wrigley. And what I figured out is that 1.2 centimeters on paper Wrigley would be equal to 30 feet on real, real Wrigley. And I'll be doing this the entire time and doing this building process where if I think something in real Wrigley is 300 feet tall or 300 feet wide, well then I know that translates to 12 centimeters on the paper stadium. And that's really all I can think to say about Michael's question. Thank you, Michael, for saying that question. It gives me something to talk about during this video. I'm sorry if it just was really just mindless rambling and none of y'all understood it, but I do like it when people ask questions because I like talking about this. It's a hobby of mine that I like to share with you people on top of the fact that this is a 10 minute video. It's hard to talk for 10 minutes. Michael, you gave me something to talk about, so thanks buddy. Something I don't plan on doing with every video, but I'm going to do it with this one because I made so much progress and it's really cool to watch it. But this last minute of the video is going to be the first nine minutes condensed into one minute, and I'm calling it Super Lightning Speed. Let's go. Hit my Paper Stadiums logo right in the middle of your screen to subscribe 
and I will catch you on the flippity flip. <laughs>